What's up everyone? Good fucking morning. And today is going to be an awesome day. I have got to say that my chest is so fucking sore from that fucking workout. 30 reps. Holy shit. So I'm curious to hear <laughs> about how you guys are feeling because my shit is sore as fuck. Uh, that 30 reps kicked my ass. My chest hasn't been this sore and I don't know how long. So that was a good fucking workout. So today we're going to train arms. And oh, by the way, I fucking hit 310, motherfucker. 3 fucking 10. So I'm excited about that shit. Um, just, I just fucking bounced up three and a half pounds out of nowhere. Boom. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's going on, but hey, I'll take it. So, all right, arms, let's talk about arms. So the arm workout today, uh, we're gonna kill motherfucking arms, gonna destroy them. So starting off with skull crushers on the Smith machine. And I haven't done these in a long time. These are, used to be one of my favorites for putting on masks. Actually, my very favorite is skull crushers with the free weight, and I lived, by those for probably 15 years. I did those every fucking tricep workout. And you know, those are probably the best mass builder. And I used, I went I used to go up to 275, and I'm not bullshitting you. 275 on skull crushers. And I'm telling you, man, those motherfuckers, they, they fucking destroy your elbows. Destroy. Fucking destroy your elbows. So uh, I switched over to Smith Machine Skull Crushers and I used to do those and those are a lot easier on your elbows, night and day, but they still fucking hurt the elbows. So, you know, you got to be careful. Um, so anyway, that's, that's what we're starting off today with Skull Crushers on the Smith Machine. If you want to do free weights, do free weights. If your elbows are fine, fuck it, hit the free weights. Um, Smith Machine, uh, that's where I'm doing and I'm going to... Hit, I'm going to hit those and then I'm going to hit drag curls on the Smith machine, which is another mass builder. Uh, I'm sure most of, a lot of you out there haven't heard of drag curls. I've talked about them in the past. I've done videos on them. Um, you know, when I was with Mutant, I did videos on them. A lot of people didn't know about them, weren't aware of them. I've ran into people that have never heard of them. So uh, my assumption is a lot of people out there haven't heard of drag curls. So it's going to be a new exercise. It's a great mass builder. On the Smith machine, it's, it's, it works wonders. It's a little tricky because the bar, you know, moves and it hooks on the, on the, you know, on the hooks. So it's, it's a little tricky. You got to kind of get used to it. But once you, once you get it down, it works really well. And the only reason I prefer it on a Smith machine is I can isolate my biceps. When I do it with a free bar, I tend to do a shrug and I tend to use my traps more so than on the Smith machine. So that's my main reason for doing it on a Smith machine. Um, they originally were invented, you know, they're basically always done with free weights. And you know, it's an old exercise from the 60s and 70s that were incredibly popular in the 60s and 70s and they just faded away. So it's an incredible mass builder. Um, you can do it on the free bar or you can do it on the Smith machine. And when I do on the free bar, I just feel it a little bit more in my traps and I feel like I'm shrugging a little bit more than curling. So that's why I prefer the Smith machine. I'm, I kind of tried the Smith machine on my own, just messing around, you know, uh, and I liked it. So I stuck with it. So that was just kind of my personal, I kind of stumbled upon it on my own. Um, all right, next exercise is gonna be tricep overhead ropes, overhead extension with the rope. And this is, as you guys know, one of my favorites. Uh, it's really easy on the elbows. That exercise kills the elbows, but with the rope cable, it's really easy. I get a huge stretch at the bottom, a huge squeeze on top, just fills with blood. It's a great mass builder, and it's probably, it is, I would say that is my favorite tricep exercise. Overhead with the rope on the cable, currently that's my favorite tricep exercise. And that's going to be supersetted with, uh, not supersetted, I'm going to be doing right after that, going to cable curls with the curl bar. And... You know, I consider that somewhat of a mass builder. I uh, come up, make sure you squeeze the bicep at the top, full stretch, but keep those reps going to pump that blood in there. You know, it's, it's, 
you have to keep pumping and not take a break. A lot of people rest at the bottom and you just got to keep that bar moving. Squeeze at the top and um, I, didn't, I haven't even talked about sets and reps. So uh, let's talk about sets and reps. We're going to start with high reps, 30, and we're going to pyramid all the way down to 12. So it's a rather high rep day, um, but not super high. It's, I guess it's a medium rep day. So starting with 30, pyramid down to 12, we're going to be doing five sets of every exercise. So after the bicep cable curls, we're going to be going and doing the tricep rope push downs. So um, those work the inner head, which is, I'm sorry, those work the outer head, the lateral head of the tricep, and the overhead extension works the inner head. So it's crazy is that you're using the rope on the overhead, but the way the arms are angled, you're working the inner head. So you know, it's, uh, if, if you analyze the exercise, it'll make perfect sense, even though you're using the rope on both exercises. It's completely different. And the rope pushdowns is gonna be supersetted with the cable concentration curl, which is, that's definitely by far my favorite bicep exercise. I, you probably rarely see me do a bicep workout where I'm not doing cable concentration curls. I fucking get the most crazy pump, crazy squeeze, and watching, just watching me do that exercise, you can see the benefits. I mean, it's an amazing exercise. And just flexing and squeezing on top and just pumping and pumping, your pump is insane. And I feel like I have the most control and I can just, I can get the most incredible pump and pain in my arms of any exercise. So that's definitely my favorite exercise. So after that, we're gonna go over to close grip bench presses. And again, I like to do these on the hammer incline. Um, if you don't have a hammer incline, you can do them on the hammer flat. If not a hammer flat, um, you can do them on Smith Machine. That's probably my third choice. And Smith Machine flat. The only reason the hammer incline is the angle of that incline hammer machine, um, you can bring, you just have to try it and feel, get the feel of it. The feel is insane. It goes right to the tricep. And I'm actually bringing the bar to my forehead and coming up, but I can keep the elbows in and squeeze the tricep. And it's kind of a cross between a close grip bench and a skull crusher. And the pump in the tricep is insane, and you can throw on a shitload of weight and not be hard on the elbow or shoulders and not even feel it on the shoulders. Now, close grip bench on the flat bench press, for me, it's impossible to do that and not feel it in my shoulders and chest. Impossible. Um, so if you guys can do close grip bench on a flat barbell press with free weights and not at all feel it in your chest or shoulders, then I would say, fuck it, stick to that. Do them there. But I, for the life of me, it's impossible for me to do close grip bench press and not feel it in my chest and shoulders. Impossible. So, I mean, I can isolate my tricep and put it mostly in my tricep, but I still feel it in my chest and shoulders. On the hammer incline, all tricep. Hammer flat, all tricep. Ha uh, Smith machine, I would say I can probably get it to about 95% tricep. Flat free weight, fuck, probably the, at best, maybe 60% tricep, at best. And that's just me personally. So um, that's gonna be supersetted with hammer preacher curls. Uh, hammer dumbbell preacher curls. And I haven't done these in a while. Um, they just popped in my head. And I'm telling you that it's, 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 it's a great exercise. So I can't wait to do those, the, the dumbbell hammer um, preacher curls. So those, um, I'm, I either do them on the preacher bench or I do them on the incline bench. And with the incline bench, I can bring it all the way up and have that perfect angle. And on the preacher bench, it's the same thing, but some gyms, they have the bar that comes across that you put the barbell on and it gets in the way. So when you come down, the dumbo hits that little fucking, you know, that holds the barbell and it fucks you up. So the gyms that don't have the right preacher, I use the incline bench. The gyms that have the correct preacher where I can use a dumbbell and everything works, then I prefer the preacher. So since I'm gonna be at North Hollywood Golds, I'll probably, you know what? I can use either. So whatever's open, I guess, we'll wait and see. But yeah, the. The Preacher Bench is great at Gold's North Hollywood. It's funny, someone just mentioned that on Instagram today. They asked me why I don't do Preacher Curls. They talked about Larry Scott, greatest arms. Why don't you do Preacher Curls, Rich? Well, 
Whoever said that, I do do preacher curls. <laughs> um, I love preacher curls. And I do hammer preacher curls, I do barbell preacher curls, and I do reverse grip preacher curls. And I guess I just haven't been doing them lately, but it's definitely been, uh, it's been an exercise that I've used throughout my entire fucking bodybuilding, you know, career, or whatever you want to call it, since I was 11 years old. Preacher curls has been a big part of my bicep training. So to answer your question, fucking love preacher curls. I do do them. So uh, you're probably the one that fucking planted that seed in my head, and that's probably why it popped in my head to do these hammer preacher curls. It's probably your fucking fault. So. Um, all the sets, reps are going to be the same. We're going to do five sets of each exercise. Start off with 30 reps to get that burn and pyramid all the way down to 12, five sets. And the reasoning for that is when you do those 30 reps, your arms are so fucking pumped and they hurt so fucking bad. As you raise the weight, you keep that pain going, but the weight's getting heavier. And a lot of times when you go heavier, you can't get the same burn and pump that you can get from doing high reps. So I guarantee when you guys do this workout, you're gonna see the reasoning, because after you do that 30 rep, you're on fire. You're like, what the fuck? Especially on arms. So anyway, guys, I'm 310, if I didn't tell you, three fucking big, do you hear me? Three fucking 10. Yeah, that's a shitload. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm gonna get my ass on fucking cardio. I'm gonna start this fucking day. And I'm gonna see if I can hold on to 310. So now I'm excited to fucking hit all those meals. And it looks like I won't have to raise the meals as soon as I thought. That'd be great. Try to hang on to eight meals as long as I can, get as much as I can out of it. And I'm gonna get my ass on cardio, get this day started. I'm excited. Looking forward to that fucking arm workout. And my chest is fucking killing me. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a great fucking day. And uh, let's do this. Meal number two, the beginning of the day. I don't really come in this room that much, as you guys very well know. <laughs> but it's a nice, quiet little getaway. And uh, the only time I really come in here is I might come down and lay on this couch, take a little, you know, 10, 15 minute nap. Even if it's not the nicest piece of furniture, you're, you're attached to it because you have history with it. I remember at the time it was it was so overly priced for the amount of money I had to spend on a couch. Like there was no way in the world I should have bought this couch at the time. And so uh, you know, for me it was it was uh, uh, has a lot of sentimental value because of that. And uh, what this couch is worth to me, money wise, you know, is probably a hundred times more than it's worth, you know, to anyone else. I mean, it's you know, it's uh, it. It, it was the amount of money I spent on this couch back 22 years ago was insane and it like broke me like I was broke for months trying to catch up because of this fucking couch so yeah so that's a lot of sentimental value for that reason and you look at it now and it's yeah it's just a fucking red red fucking couch big deal right but at the time, man, it was like, fuck, I remember the day they delivered it, I was like, oh, I was in awe, I fucking stared at it. Should I sit on it, or should I not sit on it? <laughs> and I remember pain, my pit bull at the time, my male, I remember that um, the, the, the delivery guys delivered the couch, and they, we put it in the area that I felt was the best place for it, and the first thing pain did is he hopped up on the couch, and he stretched, but you know how they stretch and they roll around on their back, you know, get all excited and he, he stretched his legs out. And I remember he just put a big scratch whoosh, all the way across the couch. And I was just like, ah, in my head, I was like, oh my God. And that was like, that was like a real test of, uh, of my patience. And um, um, I said nothing. I didn't yell at him, I didn't make him get down, I didn't freak out, and um, you know, that was a good test. And there was a movie called American Beauty, if you guys, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but in the movie, there's a very important scene, and basically the message they want to get across is that um, these are just things, you know, they mean nothing in life. Um, you know, you, you know, no matter how much that couch costs, no matter how much money you spend on it, no matter how 
you know, it was imported from Italy, it was, it doesn't matter, it's still, it's just material things, it has no meaning, you know, as far as life, and, you know, your dog, Pain, is family, you know, he's my family, and he's like my, like my little son, and for him to get up on the couch and stretch and, and scratch it, it, it means nothing, you know, it's, the what he means to me is a million times more important than this couch, and, you know, uh, not yelling at him, not, you know, making him get down, you know, not allowing him to get on the couch, you know, you're not allowed on the couch to get down, you know, to me is, is ludicrous. And it was that movie is what, you know, made me change the way I looked at things. And it's, it's a really good movie if you guys haven't seen it. Uh, American Beauty. And, um, you know, it's, it's, that's one of the most important messages in that movie, but that movie has a lot of messages and um, it's a good movie to really make you think about things in life. And that was the thing that it really helped me with is, is you know, realizing that these things are meaningless. They're just things, you know. So if I'm, if I'm going to get in, in my car, in my Bentley, and, and drive to the store, and I want to bring pain with me, then fuck it. Come on, pain, let's go, buddy. He gets in the car and, you know, he rides in the passenger seat and we have a good fucking time and we go to the store and come back and that's life, is enjoying life and, you know, realizing that, that, that pain is a million times more important than that fucking car, than this fucking couch, than anything, you know, and um, enjoying whatever it is I have in life with your loved ones is most important and um, there's a lot of people that you know, in that movie, for example, you know, she freaked out on her husband because he had open beer on the couch. And she, like, freaked out on him and, you know, got angry at him and they are just right in the middle of, you know, about to, about to kiss. And, you know, she freaked out on him and it just goes to show, like, who the fuck cares about the goddamn couch? You know, you and your, your husband are about to have a very intimate, enjoyable moment together and you ruin it because of the couch, you know, fuck the couch. And, you know, he even, you know, I think he threatened to take a knife and just tear it open, you know, and, and show that, you know, the couch means nothing. And she didn't understand his point and she never got his point. And she didn't realize how far gone she was as far as how important she made material things in their life. You know, that couch meant more to her than him. And she was more concerned with that couch than she was him their marriage, you know, um, you know, everything. And um, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they get caught up in that and they lose perspective and they don't realize that these are just things and these things can be replaced. And, you know, family, friends, animals, you know, they can't be replaced, you know. And, um, you know, pain is no longer here. You know, he passed away and I still have this fucking red couch, you know. And, you know, I let Payne do whatever he wanted on this couch. You know, he was more important than this couch. And, you know, I wish to God that Payne was here and the couch was gone, you know. Um, but at least I can say that, you know, I gave him the best life I could give him. And, you know, when it came to him with the couch, you know, he came first. You know, I don't give a fuck if he fucking bites a hole in the couch, fuck it, throw the couch away, go buy another one, right? His enjoyment, and, you know, him enjoying life and being happy and his happiness is far more important than a piece of furniture. So anyway, I don't know where this all came from, but again, it's a good lesson learned that material things don't mean shit. You know, and you just, you have to enjoy it and look at it as, you know, it's, it is what it is. Um, whether it's a $10,000 piece of furniture or a $200 piece of furniture, it's still just a fucking piece of furniture. Who the fuck cares? You know, it's still just a thing, you know, and uh, it really means nothing. And um, that's true with everything, you know. And so anyway, guys, good lesson learned. And um, I got to keep eating this meal. And every time I film when I'm eating, I fuck it up because I can't shut the fuck up. Right, babe? Yeah. I talk too much, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got another delivery. It's fucking Christmas time, God damn it! I love it. Jealous, babe? Yes, very. Jealous, babe? <laughs> okay. So, I 
in this package, water. Just simple fucking water. That's it. <laughs> water. So, you guys know what this is. Bacterial static for the sterile stems because sterile stems come with sterile water. And it's basically a scam that Serrano has been doing for years. And what happens is growth hormone, um, if you use sterile water, it only lasts 24 hours. So once you mix it, after 24 hours, it goes bad and or loses potency or whatever it may be. It's basically, you can't use it after 24 hours. So uh, every other company uses bacterial static water, which bacterial static water, it lasts up to three to four weeks when you mix it with bacterial static water as long as it's refrigerated. So their reasoning for that is if the doctor gives a dosage of four IUs a day and the bottles are 18 IUs, then the patient takes out four IUs and they have to throw the rest away because it won't be good the next day. So four IUs, it's 18 IU bottle, so they're throwing away 14 IUs in the garbage, which is hundreds of dollars thrown away daily. Okay, now it the reasoning for this is that every single person that's prescribed Serostim is going to have to use a bottle a day because if they don't use a bottle a day, whatever they don't use is not going to be good the next day, so it needs to be thrown away. So any patient that's prescribed Serostim, no matter what dose it is, is going to go through a bottle a day, a box a week, four boxes a month. Okay. Now those boxes cost $2,200 at the pharmacy. You can get on the phone, dial any pharmacy, and if they carry Serostim or, or they can possibly order Serostim, the price is around $2,200 a box. So that would mean that anyone that has prescribed Serostim will prescribe four boxes a month. So four boxes, four times 22 is $8,800 a month is what they're spending. $88,800 a month growth hormone. And if Serosim, I mean, I'm sorry, if Serrano simply used bacterial static water and the patient was prescribed four IUs a day, they would only have to use what? One box a month? So instead of $8,800, it would be $2,200. So, but guess what? They're not making nearly as much money. They're making four times the amount of money by using sterile water and having the patients throw the remainder of the growth hormone away. So, it's brilliant, but it's a motherfucking scam, right? It's fucking unbelievable, again. So, uh, they're the only company that I know of that doesn't use bacterial static water in their growth hormone. And I, the reasons are obvious. They're making four times the amount of money. Or it could be however many times, depending on what the patient's dosage is. So um, what I'm basically getting at, other than letting people know how this company is, you know, ripping people off, is uh, not ripping people off, you know, ripping the insurance companies off because insurance is what pays um, for the patients to be on Serrano Serostim. So what my main point, I guess, is, is that for people like us who can't afford to throw away fucking growth hormone is you got to use bacterial static so the growth hormone lasts. So I'm taking four and a half I use a day. So four and a half I use, a bottle is going to last me four days, right? Now, if I use the water that came with the Serostim, then I'd have to throw it away every single day and I'd have to go through a box a week. So I'd be spending $2,200 a week. So simply getting the bacterial static water, I go through a bottle every four days. So obviously that's mandatory. So you gotta get the bacterial static water and use that. Mix it with water, once it's in the fridge, it's gonna last three to four weeks. 
So that's what this is, the bacterial static water. You can get it online. Um, it's legal to buy water. It's just water in a bottle. You know, it's bacterial static, so there's nothing illegal about it. And as I've already made clear, I don't do any of this in my personal house. I have nothing in my house. I have no drugs in my house whatsoever. Um, you know, I'm taking Serosim every single day, every morning on an empty stomach, but I don't do it at my house. And a lot of people might say, well, that's how the hell do you do that if it's in the morning and da 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 da. Well, you know, the point is, is I have to do that. I don't have a choice. So I have to be able to make that work. It's very important because the risk involved of me telling the whole world I'm taking Serostim and uh, you know that knowledge out there that I'm taking growth hormone is not a very good situation as everyone knows. So I, it's mandatory that I have nothing in my house you know, in case anybody wanted to come check that out better to be safe than sorry, so I keep nothing in my house. So, you know, whether I have a friend that lives a couple blocks away and I get in my car and drive there in the morning or whatever the scenario may be, um, you know, that's what I do. I don't keep it in the house. So, I'm just reiterating that so that anyone out there watching realizes that I have the bacterial static I just ordered online, but even though this is legal, there's nothing wrong with it, what you mix with it is not legal, um, unless you go through a longevity doctor, which you can very easily do. Um, growth hormone is prescribed to anyone that's in their 40s. If you're in your 40s, you can get growth hormone prescribed legally from a longevity doctor because your growth hormone levels have diminished. And once you get into your 40s, your levels are pretty low. So um, I would suggest um, going that route getting it legally prescribed. I have testosterone legally prescribed to me. So I have testosterone, but the growth hormone, um, I have got a prescription for it in the past and it's very, very, very expensive to go that route. So therefore it's just, you know, it's, it's out of control. So, um, uh, but I do, I, was, I have had it prescribed in the past, but currently um, I'm not being prescribed growth hormone, but I am being prescribed testosterone. So my testosterone is prescribed. Every steroid is a derivative of testosterone. So anyway, guys, back to my fucking Christmas day. <laughs> I went on a little fucking explanation about bacterial static. So bacterial static, what the fuck else do I have? Let's check it out. My big ass motherfucking knife. <laughs> All right. Do we got here? God damn it! Hey, Rich, we are sending you a bitch towel sample. Okay, the fuck is this? It's a bench towel. Does anyone know what a bench towel is? I have no idea what a bench towel is. I know what a towel is, but I don't know what a bench towel is. So here we go. It's a towel. Looks like it goes on a bench, like a bench press. Right? Oh, look it. It has a little fucking pocket here. So, I guess what you do is you slip this on the bench, like so. And then when you lay down and do your set, you're not having someone's greasy, grimy sweat all over your back and shirt. And the worst scenario is someone that was on the bench before you stunk like a motherfucker. And then you lay down and do your set, and when you sit up, you're like, what the fuck is that smell? It smells fucking disgusting, that's fucking awful. And you look around and there's no one around you. And you're like, what the fuck? And you don't realize that it's you that fucking stinks because the guy before you on the bench stunk like a fucking piece of shit, and now you have his sweat on your back and on your shirt. Now you're gonna walk around the gym being that fucking guy the fucking smelly fucking guy at the gym. There's always someone who fucking always stinks every fucking day or every night at the gym. There's that one person, and I'm sure you guys know who I'm talking about. At every gym, you got a stinky motherfucker. Basically, my job is to decide if we want, if I want to carry these and I want to sell these online 
or make them an official 5% product. And um, what do you guys think? Would you buy this? Would you buy a 5% bench towel that you put on a fucking bench to lay down on to keep from fucking sweating? Um, you know what I say? I say, nah, I wouldn't buy one. I'd rather have just a regular towel that you just lay out on the bench and carry around with you. I wouldn't want a fucking towel that you fucking fit over the bench and put on the bench. Uh, yeah, that's not my cup of tea. So, we will not be ordering those. So that was easy enough. Now, the fucking gut in here. Oh yeah, it's Christmas time. Oh shit, what is this? Oh, this is some of Sarah's shit. This is Sarah's balance oil. So, yep, since you that's know. your shit, babe. Yep, since you know. Not my shit, that's your shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, always save the best for the last. The biggest package, last. And it always seems like the biggest package is never the best package, right? <laughs> but for some reason, you always think it is. Oh, we got clothes, goddammit. We have clothes. And this, I hope this isn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably mine. Right. Look at that. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see that shit. Woo! Blacked out. Blacked out. Five percenters for life. That is fucking sick. I have to say. Here's the front. The fucking hoodie. Fucking love it. Kill it. Blacked out. Little five percent emblem here. Now, you guys take notice that this is shiny and black. This isn't shiny. So, what does that mean? That means that somebody fucked up. Luckily, it's a sample, and they send this to me, and I give the final okay. That's the way it works. So this one is about small? So, this is a small. So, as far as I say, I say this thing kicks fucking ass. Sick. And I love it, and we're definitely gonna go through and make these. And what's awesome about this is, you when you're looking for something to wear, this matches everything. Yeah. It's black, and it's not overkill. I think sometimes when you have black with red writing, and then pants black with red writing, and then red shoes, and then a red hat, and then red headphones, and then a red wallet, that's a little too much. You know, you're <laughs> getting a little too carried away. So. That's why I like to have some all black shit, you know, to keep it from getting too fucking carried away. I think there's, there's going, you know, going past that fucking line of overly matching everything. Yeah, right. So these we're definitely gonna go through with, but there's an issue here that we gotta have fixed. I don't know what's up with that because this needs to be the same as this, in my opinion. Yeah. So that's why they sent it to me and I give the final fucking yay or nay. And this one, I assume, is going to be in my size. Yeah, because it's like whale size. It's so big. <laughs> Huge. Oh, let's see what size this fucking thing is here, babe. What does that say? 4. 4X. Four right? 4XL. Yes, 4XL. Four four XL. That's what I'm talking about. It's a tent. Okay. And you know what's crazy is the thing, the motherfucking thing is still fucking too tight on my arms. I gotta stretch that shit out. But, look at this. Love it, kill it, blacked out. Oh, look, the same thing. The emblem down here. Maybe it's supposed to be like that or something. Uh, well, no, it's supposed to be how the fuck I say it's supposed to be. No, I mean, like, <laughs> maybe they didn't make a mistake, you know? Well, what the fuck I say is, it's not going to be like that. <laughs> no, no, of course not. But I'm saying, like, maybe yeah, they yeah. Whoever, whoever made this, that's yeah. how it's supposed to be in their head. Yeah. And that's what they thought, or that's what they were told, or mm -hmm. that's the way it was... They were given directions, but yep. that's not the way it's going to fucking be. Nope. Five percent for life. Blacked out. Yeah. Fucking suck. Are we going to So imagine, I wear this fucking hoodie with these pants. I got the gray, five percent, right? The gray, whatever it takes. And then I throw on a fucking gray shoes and maybe, maybe a fucking black hat. 
you know, and then I'm good. I match, but I'm not overly matched. It's not too much. So Okay, so I'll show you guys what I like to do with my hoodies. So this is a 4X and it's way, way too tight right here on my neck. It's way too tight. It's super uncomfortable. So if you come over here, babe, and oh this is this is basically the neck the hoodie right so what I do is I simply take this cut it down and I just cut it down the middle it's very important that you make sure the fucking line is fucking straight right you don't want to make a fucking crooked line and ruin the fucking sweatshirt and um, I cut it about probably about two and a half three inches you don't want to go too far Right, so I cut that right down the middle, and as you can see, I didn't really fucking take too much time measuring and look, you know, checking it. So I could have just fucked this sweatshirt up, <laughs> possibly. But uh, I don't think so. See how tight this shit is on my arms? Jeez. What the fuck? <laughs> fucking 4x. So as you can see, it fucking fits a hundred times better, and it's. It looks a hundred times better. You know, when it's all like this, tied on the neck, ah, I mean, it doesn't look right. You know, not only is it uncomfortable, it just doesn't look right. So I just cut a little line down the middle, makes it baggier, makes it fit better, makes it feel better. And uh, that's what I do. I don't do a whole lot of fucking cutting my shit up. You know, you guys know how I feel about that shit. It's like, if you have a tank top, do you really need to cut it smaller? I mean, what's, what's, what's the point in that? I mean, What's the, what's the point if I take this tank top that I have on? Do I really need to cut this and make it smaller? I mean, do I need to cut these and make this skinnier right here? And make it kind of like more like a bra look? Shooting for the, the bra look? I don't really... I'm not talking shit! I'm just, I'm just putting some information out there. I'm just planting seeds. And I'm just curious the reasoning why people feel the need to have to cut the tank top smaller and make it less material and maybe you know they want to cut it here and then they want to cut it here and then I don't know if there's like maybe they want to show their tattoos or they want to show more of their body um, I don't know but I just feel like it's kind of it's kind of going a little too far when you feel like you have to cut your tank tops and make them smaller I mean I think that you know, I, I don't know, I feel like you can see, I can see my body, you know, pretty well and I don't really, I can't really see the need to have to um, cut this tank top smaller to show more of my body. And nipples, guys, <laughs> no fucking nipples, come on man, what is the reasoning to have to want to show your nipples? Cover your fucking nipples. If you're gonna cut your tank top, great. Cut your fucking tank top, but come on, man. Cut it, you know, don't fucking cut like this and have your nipples sticking out on each side. It just looks so fucking horrific. I, I don't know, if you look in the mirror and you see your fucking nipples showing, like, I don't, Next time you have a shirt on and it's cut like that and your nipples are showing, just look in the mirror at yourself and just ask yourself, do, do I really like this look? Do I really like the way my nipples are showing? Do I like how the shirt is cut and you can see my nipples sticking out the sides? Like, do you really like that look? I mean, is that the look you really strive for? And you're, when you cut that shirt, you really are purposely trying show your nipples or is it accidental and it just I don't know I'm just confused but I know that if I put a shirt on it just doesn't feel comfortable if my nipples are showing it just doesn't feel right that's just my personal I don't know I call me crazy <laughs> I don't know but anyway it's none of my fucking business wear whatever the fuck you want I'm just curious it just I get intrigued to wonder what people are thinking when I see people walking around the gym with their nipples showing. I just, I'm just curious what 
their process of thinking is when they look at themselves in the mirror. You know, is it that's the look you're trying to have? You're 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 purposely trying to wear a tank top that shows the nipples, or maybe you cut it wrong accidentally and you don't want to throw the shirt away, so you're still wearing the shirt, but it's not really the look you're striving for. I'm hoping that that's the right answer. I'm hoping that's the reasoning behind it. But anyway, it's really none of my fucking business what shirt you're wearing or how you wear it or how you cut it. But I happen to notice it and it pops in my head. And anyway, enough about nipple talk. Um, let's get on with the fucking day. <laughs> All right, it is shoe time. And I'm sporting my gray. I never wear gray. I haven't worn gray in over a year. Uh, I have no idea why. Charcoal gray is a sick ass color. So I gotta find shoes to go with the sick ass fucking gray. So let me see. What do we got here? Black will always work. Um, let me see. We got fucking silver chrome fucking Gucci's, right? Nah. Not the greatest match, I don't think, right? Uh, let me see, I got the fucking chrome ass fucking Adidas. Look at that shit, those are sick as fuck, but you know, I don't know. It's a little off, right? Oh, check this out. I don't think you guys see these. Look at these. Oh, this those are sick. Fucking chrome fucking superstars. Oh, nice. With some fucking bling, babe. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I haven't worn these in fucking years. Those are those are just like fucking just have to have and shit. Those are sick. What else? God damn it. Oh, and then of course I got some fucking can't wear these, but some brand new fucking gray Nikes that would match that still have the goddamn paper in them because <laughs> I never wore this shit. Anyone out there that wears a 14? And your friends with me, let me know. And these are yours, because I will never wear them. They're brand new, never been worn. And 14 is way too small. Give them. Right? You, well, I wear 15 too, so they won't even fit. Don't you wear 16? No, 15, babe. Oh. 15. Anyway, Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah. So, look at these. What about these, babe? I haven't worn these in. I haven't worn these. I don't think I've even worn these shoes since I've known you. These are pretty sick, right? Yeah. This is, this Gray and black cool. Adidas. They match perfect. Yeah. What do you think? Yep. It's cool. It's yep. good. It's a winner. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's not over overmatch. Nope. Not too much match. Nope. There's nothing worse when you fucking are overmatch. That's worse than. <laughs> that's the worst fucking scenario there is. Is to be fucking too matched. Look like a goddamn fucking Fruit Loop. <laughs> <laughs> fruit a loop. fucking Fruit Loop. I like that. You can't look like a fucking Fruit Loop, babe. But, but, but maybe I want to look like a Fruit Loop. Yeah. Well, you can look like a Fruit Loop. Oh, these are pretty sick. I like yeah. these shoes, actually. Yeah. These are sick. I like them. You know why I never wear them? Because I don't like fluorescent. I hate fucking fluorescent. Yeah. Fluorescent shit is fucking, I can't stand it, but... I like some of those. These are fucking colors. sick. Shit, I like these. God damn it. I never fucking wore these. They look sick. They're beefy as fuck, too. See, people, when I come out with my shoes someday, this is one of the main things, is, is how beefy they are. You know, how fucking beefy and thick they are. I love that thick ass fucking look. And these, these ones are, these are, these are thick as fuck. These are sick. And the reason why is because they don't have a colored, uh, what do you call it? Around the sole. Like if this was gray right here, if this little gray here on the front went on the sides, yeah. it would make them look more narrow. Uh, so yeah. by taking that off, it makes them look thicker. Yeah. See, these are little You're tiny right. details that most people don't pay attention to. Yeah. But since I'm such a shoe fanatic, mm -hmm. I pay attention to every little fucking detail. So, if I ever come out with my shoe line, they're fucking off the hook. Right. All right. Well, obviously, we don't really have a choice of what car we're going to take because the only one we can fucking drive is the fucking your car. Yeah.
We are on our food run. And we're a little fucking late. <laughs> we're already in, in and out. In line. And I don't even know why we're fucking late, babe. Well, I think we were so stressed about getting here on time that we fucking didn't even <laughs> record. Because <laughs> it's 102. So, <laughs> we wait, is that show? Yeah. It's 102 a.m. So, we barely, I guess we made it on time, right? Yeah. I mean, it's 102. I don't think we've been sitting here for two minutes, so, but... I don't know, but we were, I think we were so fucking, like, didn't think we were going to make it, we didn't even turn the goddamn camera on. I <laughs> know. We were racing so fast. Jeez. It's raining out, and I was hauling ass. Slipping and sliding and fucking burning out. On the pink Sarah's car. Sarah's new car. Because <laughs> I don't give a fuck. No, I was kidding. No, don't say that. <laughs> but I pulled out of our street and got a little fucking sideways and pulled it back getting a little crazy in this pink motherfucking car, right? Yeah. Yep. Shit, it ain't my car. I'll drive it like a fucking lunatic. Babe. <laughs> I'll break this fucker in. No. <laughs> so it's 1 a.m. and Sarah decides she thinks she wants to have ice cream tonight and she just decided at 102 a.m. <clears throat> so <laughs> there's there's nothing open that has Cinnabons. God damn it. So she's stressed out. Uh, and she thinks she's going to find something, which we've already we've already been down this road about 12 times and never found anything before. So I don't know what makes you think you're going to find something tonight. I don't know. Looks like you're going to be stuck with peanut butter cup. What's that? A uh, cup holder? Uh, yeah, please. Yeah. They have a good cup holder. Um, so, yeah, so we can keep filming. We just gotta. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. Two double doubles. There you go, babe. Thank you. All right. Think you can hold these sodas? Uh. Sure. Make sure I don't scrape your fucking black rims. All right? I know I'm Can not I gonna like be the first one to scrape your black rims. Can you what? Okay. Keep this on the floor. Oh. Okay. Should we do some uh, some 360s in the parking lot? No. Why not? No, just. No? No. I'm so hungry. So hungry. Hey, babe. Oh. <laughs> Oof. Come on, let's get crazy, goddammit. Let's get fucking crazy. Mm. I'm like yawning here. You're yawning? Yeah. You're fucking wide awake, wired. Wired as fuck. I don't know. I'm full of energy. I don't know how that... Full of energy. I don't know how that came about. Are you cold? Is the window okay with the window down? Is it too loud? A little bit. A little bit too loud for the fucking videotaping? Yeah. Hold that shit up. God damn it. I'm looking. I found the store that's 20, 24 hours. That What's has it called? Uh, pavilions. Pavilions? Yeah. Where's it at? It's uh, 14 miles away. 14 miles? We're not going 14 miles. Are you out of your mind? That was the... <laughs> 14 miles. Where's it at? Um, it's it's by the I'm gym. It's on a store. It's fucking an hour and a half away. <laughs> it's by the gym. It's by the gym. I know exactly where it is. It's on Laurel Canyon and fucking Magnolia. It's by the gym, yeah. right? And it's by the gym. I know exactly where it is. In West Hollywood. What? West Hollywood. West Hollywood. Okay, <laughs> West Hollywood. Yeah, I think so. That's Hold not. On. I know where that one is. That one's on Santa Monica Boulevard. That's fucking far as shit. That's fucking, Maybe there's a closer that's one. That's like fucking over half an hour away. <laughs> yeah. Pavilions. Yeah, that's in West Hollywood. That's fucking, you know how far that is? 24 hours. It, yes, <laughs> it's 24 <laughs> hours. No joke. I know, it's it's like a half an hour away. Uh, so you know West Hollywood, you know, a, you know where, right before, right by Beverly Hills. It's fucking far. 
I don't know how they say it's only 14 miles. It's fucking far as hell. You got to go over, fucking over Laurel Canyon down, or you get to the 405 exit. It's fucking far. Yeah, that's, it looks like you're, you're having peanut butter cup, babe. It's a break to take it. Uh, or just nothing. What? Or just nothing. You would have, you, you don't want nothing? No, I mean, like, I, I, I would rather have. Have you had that white chocolate before? The one I always have? Have you tried that? Yeah, no. Nah. It's good. You, I mean, you might like that. Nah. You like white chocolate more than me. I know. I'm just very weird with ice cream. I know, but you you didn't even like fucking ice cream when I met you. You didn't even want ice cream. Remember? I would yeah. eat ice cream every night and you wouldn't even want any. Yeah. Forever. Until I found Now you're a fucking ice cream fiend. Until I found out. Out of out, control. Until I found out um, about... Do you want to check this store, 7-Eleven? What for? You think they're gonna have Cinnabons? I don't know. They may have something. I don't know. It's just the thought. Oh, the, the other 7-Eleven's right. There. The other 7-Eleven. Oh, the other one because the other one doesn't have my raspberry. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll get on the way back because otherwise ice cream's gonna melt. Oh, okay. Waiting for the fucking. They take fucking 20 minutes to make a goddamn burrito. Last night I didn't even show that. Not last night. The night before last, when we went to the Mexican place. Yeah. I didn't even. I. I we had it on camera that it took 15 minutes to make a burrito, but how am I going to show that? Have people sit and fucking <laughs> watch for 15 minutes while nothing's going on? Awful. <laughs> so I can show people how, how lame they are? <laughs> I know, right? You didn't... Fucking Northridge Hospital. These are the motherfuckers that they misdiagnosed me. I had a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, fuck. What did I have, babe? My appendix bursted. Yeah. And I was I was dying. I was literally dying. I had poisons running all inside me. And it was eaten. It was I was like dying. And I went there and I was in the most severe pain I've ever been in my fucking life. I was it was it was crazy and they fucking they drugged me up on morphine. And then they asked me after I was drugged up, they're like, "How are you feeling?" And I'm like, "Well, I feel a lot better." They're like, "You do?" I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Okay, we can send you home." Right? Well, of course I feel better. I'm drugged up on morphine. Uh, they sent me home, told me nothing was wrong, and I went home, and about an hour later, after I got home, the pain started in again, because the drugs wore off. Yeah. And uh, and it was it was out of fucking control. Yeah. And I was, I was like, I was in so much pain. And so I was fucking, I called someone up and got some fucking oxy. Uh-huh. Uh, what do you call it? What's it called? Oxy, uh, I don't know, that Oxy crazy painkiller that's like stronger than fucking Norco's. Oxyhydron, maybe, or something? Oxo, Oxy what? Hydron? Codone or some shit? Um, okay. Anyway, yeah. it's... There are, there are few. Anyway, it's shit's fucking strong as fuck. And so, I started self-medicating myself, taking that shit. And, uh, uh, and I was still in pain. And then I figured out that if I sit in the jacuzzi... Uh, like 103 degrees. That was the only thing that made the pain go away. So I was sitting in the fucking jacuzzi like all day long, like 18 out of 24 hours a day. I was in the fucking jacuzzi at 103. And then uh, a buddy of mine, a buddy of mine asked me if he could fucking have a party at my house for his birthday. And this was like months before that. And so I couldn't renege. So I'm, meanwhile, my buddy's throwing a fucking pool party at my house. And I'm in the house fucking dying. And he sends this girl in from the party who's a nurse at UCLA. And she basically, she basically came in and told me that she's like, she goes, you're, you're, she basically said, you're like, you're gonna die. You need to go to the fucking hospital. And just by explaining my symptoms and what was going on. And uh, I went to the hospital. My appendix had been bursting for almost three days. Wow. Yeah, and that's that's like it's crazy. That's like people die from that. People lose like it, the poisons eat their insides out. Yeah, no, it's crazy. So. Oh, thank God you're alive, babe. So. All right, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna go order this shit. You wanna get out? Or you wanna stay here? Uh, like here. Can I leave the door open? Uh, it's so cold. Burr. <laughs> so cold, guys. Burr. Yeah. Is that shit rolling or what? Mm-hmm. Well, I need an action.
Action. Can I get a fucking action? Nope. God damn it. Can I get an action already? Hey, I can't even get a fucking action. So we're still on our fucking quest for ice cream. And we've gone to fucking two 7-Elevens. Got our Mexican food right here. And, uh... And in and out. And we haven't found shit for ice cream. I know, but everything's closed. God damn it, we should have got our ass out sooner. Well, I'm oh. just looking for the white fucking chocolate, which is usually... Oh, wait a minute. Let me, let me go back to that one video where you're saying, they have it everywhere. They have white chocolate everywhere. And I said, everywhere, you're everywhere. Uh, okay. Guess okay. what, babe? Oh, there's someone right here, babe. Okay. Oh, shit. Past it. Oh, damn it. What's that? All the one? Yeah, there's one right up here, too. Okay, let's go to that one. Well, it's, it's yeah, but right. this one might have it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the other one might not, and then we're fucked, right? Might as well, should we just check them all? Okay. Okay. This is the smallest, shittiest yeah. 7 Eleven I've ever seen in my fucking life. I know, right? Look at this fucking ghetto ass 7 Eleven. Oh my this god. This is fucking Brother. shit. You gonna wait here? Uh, and I'll just see if they have it? Okay, sure. It's goddamn ice creams. Yeah, so no fucking go. Another 7-Eleven, no fucking white chocolate, no peanut butter cup. Sarah's fucking fucking up on the filming tonight. No, I'm Big not. time. I'm trying to figure out here. Big time. I'm trying to figure out here. Am I going the right way or what? Going the right way, yeah, I'm going the right way. There's another 7-Eleven right up here. Yeah, I was. There's gonna, like five 7-Elevens on the way home. At yeah, least. I was gonna. I was gonna. We've already hit four. That's the fourth one, right? Fourth or fifth, third? A uh, third. Third 7-Eleven. We hit three 7-Elevens. We can't find white chocolate, Haagen Dazs, and fucking peanut butter cup, Ben and Jerry's, and usually it's everywhere. It's, it's always when you need to find something, you can't find it. I can call this one here uh, up ahead if you want. Here it is. Is this it right here? Yeah. Oh, look! I'll come with you here. This one looks bigger, so I'll come with you. You coming in? You think, you think that's gonna matter? Like if you come in, they're gonna have it all of a sudden? Yeah, maybe. It's gonna like bring good luck or some shit? Mm -hmm. no. You never know. Alright, let's go then. Over your ass. I am trying here in my... My slippers, you know? Jesus. For your big fat ass. Your With big, beautiful, fat ass. I love it. Look, it's matching. Come on, goddammit. Bring your big, fat, beautiful ass. Woo! Okay. <laughs> What's up? So you have that shit. Oh, wait, wait. Hold Your on. shit's over there. Oh, okay. I was like, they barely have anything at all. Like... Oh my god, babe, they don't even have... Babe, like, they don't have white chocolate anywhere now. There's a shortage of white chocolate haagen -Dazs. What the fuck They don't fuck even have the peanut on? butter. I am like over this. Hey, what the fuck is I'm, going on with this shit? I'm gonna call the this next is floor. This the 7-Eleven. How is this possible? I don't understand. This fucking bullshit. They don't have shit either. I don't like any of this. Oh my god. All right, it's good. I'm gonna call the next one. All right, thanks, man. Oh, look at the lips. Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> What's that? That. Babe, can you open? Babe! How's your door lock? I don't know. Uh, the plumber wants the next one? Yeah, I'm calling it or trying is this, this to. This is Reseda. I'm going to go up Reseda. Okay. Because we never go this way, so maybe there's a, some 7-Eleven I've never been to, right? 
bucket of ass. See the boulevard. There's yeah. there is one on the left. Huh? On the left soon. Oh yeah. I was trying to call that one, but it's like. Oh shit! Hold on. Oh, green, 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 green. Oh. <laughs> that was red, and then when you were already over and everything, it was green. Like. Shit. It's uh. Let me see. A little bit further. Maybe we'll find something else on the way. What? Like what? I don't know. It's fucking. It's almost two in the morning. There's nothing else to find. I don't know, babe. It's almost breakfast time. I'm trying to be positive here. The sun's gonna be coming out before we get home. All for some ice cream. Jesus. Jesus. Why are you filming the road? People don't want to see the road. They want to see me. <laughs> Squeeze me. Oh man. Okay, so we're gonna hit this 7-Eleven, and then the Plumber 7-Eleven, and that's it, right? Oh, this is uh. Yeah, this is the 7-Eleven by, uh, by Chipotle. Oh, I want to visit was open. Right? Wiz, fuckers, why are, are they open? No. What? No, they're not open. Oh, they're close as fuck. Oh, man. Fuck. What about the, the Jack in the Box there on the corner? What do you mean Jack in the Box? I don't know. No, I mean, I didn't mean that. I mean, that's uh, Chevron Jack in the Box. Chevron does have miniatures. That's not? Oh, okay. No gas stations there. Oh, okay. There's a 7-Eleven right here. Yeah. Remember? Mm-hmm. All right, that's where we're going. All right, it is time. Time to fucking go to bed. <laughs> I'm fucking exhausted. Um, as you guys can see, there's no way I'm going to be filming videos every fucking day. <laughs> I fucking tried. And I got no sleep. I was fucking sleeping two or three hours, and I'm telling you, it was affecting my growth. So, uh, the people out there that want to see a video every day, please, please just understand that I'm not going to reach. Uh, the whole purpose of this is to fucking put on weight and get big and, you know, uh, show how much size I can put on. And I'm defeating the goddamn purpose because I'm spending too much time on the fucking videos and not enough time doing what I need to do to get fucking big. Right? So, please forgive me, but I'm gonna have to cut back on how many videos I'm posting a week. And it's just due to the fact that, you know, I keep getting stuck at body weights and I know the reason because I'm not fucking sleeping enough. You know, I fucking know it. And um, so I'm gonna cut back a little bit on the videos and um, I'm gonna keep that fucking weight going. And again, the whole purpose of this is to fucking get huge and show everyone how easy it is to put on a huge amount of muscle in a short amount of time if you're willing to do whatever it takes. And again, this is everything in life. That's the most important part is this is an example. Putting on muscle is an example. But if you're willing to do whatever it takes, you can fucking accomplish whatever the fuck it is in life you choose. So that's the most important part of this whole fucking series is, yeah, I'm showing how easy to put muscle on. So the guys out there that are diehards that, you know, can't seem to put, can't seem to get up to 300 pounds as I am watching this series, hopefully it'll show you that you can, and it can be done. And it's not as hard as you think. So, but the main reason for this series is to show that not only does it work as far as putting on muscle? It's anything in life. Opening a business. Well, opening a business is a million times easier than you think it is. And perhaps the next series will be about opening a business. And you know, I wish to God I would have fucking did it when I started the 5% Nutrition because it would have been an awesome fucking series. Because if you guys could see how everything just fell into place and how I put everything together, and my, my strategy of how I, you know, made the company become a multi-million dollar company in a year and a half, it's, it's pretty fucking amazing. And, you know, I, I didn't. And, you know, there's other businesses I'm, you know, contemplating on, on starting. There's things I'm working on. 
and um, you know the problem is I can't I can't really show you what I'm working on at the time as far as other businesses because obviously it's putting it out there for other people to fucking grab it and run with it. Bigger companies, um, you know, can snag that idea and fucking beat me to the punch. You know, that's business is a fucking, you know, is a fucking horrific fucking, <laughs> you think fucking body with the politics and everything, business, you know, when it comes to money, man, it's people are motherfuckers. So, um, so I'm going to work on something, but I just want everyone to realize that the main message is you can accomplish whatever the fuck you choose if you're willing to do whatever it takes. So that's the main purpose is planting that seed and getting people to realize that, you know, all you gotta do is fucking just do it. You know, just fucking do it. I had a great fucking workout, killed arms. Um, I love training arms, I love the pump, I love supersetting arms, getting blood in both muscles back and forth. And I didn't hit forearms because I'm saving forearms for that calf and forearm workout and that's, an insane workout that's so fucking important to stress. Do not neglect the calves and farms. So I will be filming that workout because a lot of people were pissed off that I didn't show it last week. Um, so I will film this week's forearm and calf. And um, the arm workout was awesome. I'm getting ready to do my shoulders feeder workout and we're coming up. It's almost over for the shoulders. Almost time to start the arm feeders. And I'm telling you guys, our arms are going to fucking blow up. Two months straight of hitting arms every fucking night. Your arms are going to blow up. And it's going to be incredible. And then people are going to see the light. Everyone that, that takes part in the feeder arm workouts every single night for two months, you guys are going to see firsthand how incredible the results are. And you're gonna see your arms fucking grow. And it's funny because <laughs> there's all these people out there that you know talk shit, but they're not willing to give it a try. They're just gonna talk shit. And the people out there that are, are willing to give it a try are the ones that are fucking benefiting and finding out, holy shit, this shit fucking really works. And you know, the word's gonna get out and I can guarantee you you know, within the next couple of months, everyone's going to be doing fucking feeder workouts. The benefits are so fucking insane that once people start talking about it and, you know, it gets out that this shit is fucking really fucking works, everyone will be doing them. Because when you see the results, there's no way in the world that if your goals are to put on muscle that you would not do feeder workouts. It's, there's no way in the fucking world because the benefits are so insane. Um, anyway, again, I'm hitting the sack. I hope you guys had a great day. I hope you get a lot of sleep. And I'm gonna, I don't know how many videos I'm gonna do a week, but it's not gonna be every fucking day. Uh, I'm gonna try really hard because I know a lot of people, um, I got messages on my Instagram that said, hey, you know, it's whatever, Rich, it's all good. We appreciate what you're doing. But if you could just do us a favor and uh, put on your Instagram what the workout's gonna entail each day then that's fucking fine. So I'm gonna I'm gonna listen and you know do what you guys are requesting. And so every day that I don't upload a video, I will post on my Instagram the workout um, and exactly what the workout entails. And uh, any other requests, fucking talk to me on my Instagram, and um, I will try my hardest to make everyone happy. So anyway, guys, have a great night.